is the Emergency Medical Minute. So I'm going to talk about airway management and severe burns or inhalation injury. I um, use a CME um, tool called Emergency Medicine Practice. It's a really well thought out evidence-based approach and they have cool pictures and lots of um, articles cited. So this one, um, just wanted to talk about some of the things that happen in in airway burns, they can be very, very subtle. Um, does anybody know some of the things you look for? Singe nasal hairs. Singe nasal hairs. Sorry, what was that? Soot in or around the mouth, yeah. Horse voice, drooling. Um, they just may even will have just very light burns to their, their head and face. It may not look like much. These can change rapidly. So these can be airway disasters. Um, if you intubate early, you may have no problems. Sometimes within 30, 40 minutes, uh, it can be so drastic where their face looks normal to where it just looks completely edematous and you may have to do a crike or a trach. So here's a picture of a normal look at the cords right here, the retinoids, vocal cords, epiglottis. This is uh, not very long later. You can see how there's not much room for anything to get through that airway right there. Um, the um, upper airway is usually uh, burned, like thermal burns that causes blistering edema. When you fluid resuscitate, that can dramatically increase the edema very quickly. Um, the lower airway usually gets damaged with all the chemicals in the soot, and then it triggers like an ARDS type reaction, fibrin clots, things like that. Um, here's a picture of some of the carbonation sputum on a bronchoscopy. And you can even get casts that basically block the entire uh, bronchi. So here's an example of a bunch of casts that have been removed on bronchoscopy. You can see they could take out an entire lobe segment. Um, the biggest concern initially would be ability to um, get an endotracheal tube in, so you want to do it early. Um, the goal is to have at least a 7.5 tube so that you're able to do a bronchoscopy. Bronchoscopy is the gold standard right now. It'll pick up um, about 85% of uh, thermal injury or burn injuries to the to the lower lungs, um, but they may not show up for 24 to 48 hours um, with all the cascade of all the inflammatory markers and all of the the clotting factors and and other things that are going on. Um, so they may have to have serial bronx. Other big issues are carbon monoxide and cyanide poisoning. What are some of the presentations of carbon monoxide? Altered mental status, headache, cherry face, you can have seizures too, drop attacks. Cyanide is more, um, if you hit, see someone who suddenly collapses, then you think more cyanide, but often they go together in these, these burns. Um, if you have a, um, a thought of a carbon monoxide poisoning, what's the treatment? Yeah, oxygen. So if you don't have hyperbaric, then 100% on non-rebreather, 15 liters. Um, there has been some studies that show in certain populations um, that high CO2 levels, sometimes um, over 15 to 20, that there's a uh, mortality benefit in pregnant women. They think it probably helps the mother and the fetus, but there's not definitive studies. Um, until then, 100% oxygen. And then cyanide poisoning, basically blocks your ability to make, um, to use your oxygen or, or anything through the cytochrome oxidase inhibition. So these patients, both with carbon monoxide and cyanide, basically you can't use the oxygen you have to, to make any energy. So you can have um, sudden cardiac arrest, you can have um, in organ damage, especially brain issues. What's the treatment for cyanide poisoning? Yeah, the cyanokit. What's that? It's like the red, uh, it's like yeah. So the old school treatment was um, sodium thiosulfate, sodium nitrite, um, that cascade, but that can lead to methemoglobinemia. Um, so the preferred treatment now is vitamin B12 or cyanocobalamin, which is five grams IV, and that's usually done by EMS when they even think of it. It's usually finishing but by the time they get to us. And um, there is a mortality benefit to, to getting that right away. 
Um, the people that are most susceptible are the elderly and pediatric population, people who have respiratory issues. Um, if you're elderly, your, your chance of dying from a um, inhalation injury or carbon monoxide or cyanide is infinitely greater. Um, let's see, the last thing I wanted to talk about was, well, there's a couple of different things that they're starting to do. There's a, they're trialing a new pulse ox that can measure carbon monoxide. Um, it's, they say that it's fairly accurate up to a level of 15, but over that it's not that accurate. So they're still working on that. That's one thing that's coming up. They're doing um, some studies to break up these bronchial casts that are made up of fibrin clots and other things. Um, they're using nebulized heparin um, and they're even studying TPA. Those are not validated yet, but just some up and coming things. So there you go. Emergency Medical Minute is and always will be about free medical education. Medicine's most prolific podcast is successful because of our supporters, donors, and of course, our listeners. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you support spreading free medical education, please donate at our website, emergencymedicalminute.com. As always, keep listening.